A special thanks goes out to JJ for submitting today's article. And it looks like JJ's been snooping around bold.com, and it didn't take him long to find another article that proves, yet again, that no matter what women say, they all want relationships. The article JJ submitted is entitled, quote, I've been single for five years and it's getting depressing, was written by Janelle Testa. Now, Janelle Testa appears to be every bit the hookup-obsessed female with a lack of self-awareness or control that the typical American woman tends to be. A quick stroll through her Instagram tells us all we need to know about her. Interestingly enough, she's written articles in the past about why she never put her life on hold for a man. Previously to that post, she wrote about why women should never chase men no matter how much they like them. Now, the reason I've pointed these out is because those articles contradict today's article. One day, she doesn't want to put her life on hold for a man and doesn't want to chase him. The next, she's depressed about being single for five years. This is how women are, gentlemen. They tell the world, I don't need a man. Men are dogs. Men are garbage. I bathe in male tears. I'm strong and independent. Girl power. But deep down, they know that the true measure of a woman is her ability to lock down a quality man. Miss Testa and every other writer at websites like Bold all have this bipolar cycle. One week, they're writing about how much they hate men and how unnecessary we are. Then the next week, they're depressed about being single and not being able to find a man because of their bad decisions. And so today, we've caught Janelle in her, I admit it, I really do need a man phase. What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and I help men just like you become the very best versions of themselves by giving you the raw and honest truth about the dating market. If you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. Okay, let's get started here. The article starts, quote, Being single doesn't mean I'm doing anything wrong, but sometimes it feels that way. I haven't been in a long-term relationship for over five years, and sometimes I get in my head about it. I think about why that may be. In truth, it's just because my time for a relationship hasn't come yet. So right from the jump, she's in denial. The fact that she says she doesn't think she's doing anything wrong as good as tells us she knows that she's the problem. Now, she can't say that out loud because that's bad for her brand and her followers would probably abandon ship. But deep down, she knows that the common denominator in all of her failed relationships is her. Then she says she gets in her head about it as if the thoughts she's thinking are invalid or some sort of overreaction. The way women characterize a valid concern that they don't want to give credence to is, I get in my head about it. As if to say, I'm making a big deal out of something that really isn't a big deal. Newsflash, Janelle, the fact that you haven't been in a relationship in five years means four things. Number one, you've added dozens of dudes to your body count. I haven't been in a relationship in two years. I've been random guys for two years. Women always assume that we assume that if they're not in a relationship, that they're living in a convent somewhere waiting for Jesus Christ himself to show her Mr. Right. In other words, they want us to think they've been completely celibate this whole time. This is never the case. Why? Because women are never not. There's always a in their lives or their ass one way or another, whether they're in a relationship or not. Number two, the men you've hooked up with don't find you worth dealing with outside of hooking up, which means number three, you are only good for hooking up, which means number four, this is a big deal, especially as a woman whose attraction has just dropped like a stone. Sweetheart, you're in your early 30s. Surely a man would have tried to commit to you in your late 20s. But the fact that you haven't been able to gain a man's commitment given the abundance of thirsty men out here is a you problem and you know it. But hey, maybe you're just in your head about it. So let's not freak out just yet. Logically, she says, I know there's nothing wrong with me. She continues, when I really think about it, I know that I am not fundamentally broken or anything. There's nothing wrong with me or any massive improvements I need to make. I am a lovable person, she says, just as I am. Not being in a relationship doesn't change the fact that I'm a worthwhile human being. On my good days, I believe all of this, or at least I can try to tell myself it. Look, she can lie to herself and others about this all she wants to, but anyone who reads this knows that she is broken and cannot be fixed. Now, she says she's a lovable person, just as she is, but what she doesn't understand is that her definition of lovable is about so much more than just bedroom fun. Ladies, listen up, because you really need to hear this. Just because a man wants to hook up with you does not mean he wants to commit to you. So many women mistake a man's desire to be intimate with her with a man's desire to commit to her. And this is why women never improve themselves to the point of making themselves worthy of commitment. Just because you're a lot of fun in bed does not mean you're girlfriend material. This is why women who have more tattoos than they have friends describe themselves as lovable, as though they're worthy of commitment just the way they are. 
Now, she is partially correct when she says that not being in a relationship doesn't mean she's not a worthwhile human being. There are plenty of girls out there who aren't worthy of commitment who do serve several useful roles. Number one, they provide men with easy bedroom fun, which keeps us relaxed. Number two, they show other females what not to do to find a man of value. And number three, they're a cautionary tale for young girls who contemplate following the feminist template. So she does provide value in her own way, but she doesn't feel this way because right there at the end, she admits that she only believes this on her good days, which means she knows she's lying to herself. And by the way, any female who uses the phrase on my good days is telling you in no uncertain term that she is likely on some sort of antidepressant or anti-anxiety medication. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that she's been diagnosed with a mental illness. Don't get me wrong, she certainly might. But we have to understand that the female brain is simply not designed to withstand the mental and emotional toll that comes with sharing her body with dozens of men. And because of this, women who bounce from guy to guy suffer from depression and anxiety, which explains why one in four women are on either an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety medication. Likely both. In practice, I feel messed up. She continues. On many days, though, I do feel broken. I feel like I'm a huge mess who just doesn't deserve to have a nice relationship because of the person I am and the mistakes I've made. Man, my mind can be really cruel, she says. I'm my own worst critic, and I'm a harsh one. It's hard feeling like there's something really wrong with me. I'm working on combating these voices in my head, but sometimes it feels like an uphill battle. Now she's keeping it 100. On most days, she feels broken because she is broken. She's barely past 30 and already damaged beyond repair. She is a huge mess and she knows she doesn't deserve to be in a nice relationship. You wanna know why? Because good relationships are with men of value and men of value don't commit to women who look or act like her and she knows this. This is why she's depressed. And those mistakes she made? Typical mistakes most American women make. Lying, cheating, polygamy, hooking up with multiple guys in one day, trains, threesomes, you name it, she's made that mistake. She knows the things she's done that she used to characterize as being a free spirit are the things that will repel the men she really wants. She says she's her own worst critic in such a way that implies that she holds herself to a high standard. But what she's really telling us is that her mind won't shut up about telling her the truth about herself. Those voices in her head she's trying to combat, those voices are her conscience telling her, sweetheart, you've been a lost cause since number 300. And I'm not talking about Leonidas and his army. She doesn't want to believe this, but she does. And that's why this is an uphill battle for her. I've had relationships, she says, just shorter ones. She continues, it's not like I haven't had contact with another person romantically or sexually for five years. I've had plenty of encounters. I've even had some relationships here and there. They're just super short lived. I think the longest was a whopping six weeks. This is part of a reason I get so upset about being single for so long because I feel like I can't hold down a relationship. Ah, this is where she actually believes that we believe that because she's been single for five years, she must be living the life of a nun. It is beyond me. Why females think that by saying, I haven't been in a relationship in three years, that we think it means their legs have been snapped shut the entire time. Miss Testa reveals that she, and other women who use this phrase, assumes that we assume she hasn't hooked up with anybody during that time, which is exactly why she said, it's not like I haven't been intimate with anyone in five years. I've had plenty of encounters, she says. That means I've had plenty of bedroom fun. So if you've been in, quote, shorter relationships, then why are you telling us you've been single for five years? I know, because one night stands, Miss Testa, and friends with benefits arrangements aren't relationships, and you know it. Girls know that if a man chooses to be in a relationship with her, it means they are useful to him outside of intimacy. This girl told us that she's been single for five years, which is obviously not good. But then she wants to save face by telling us, well, I've had relationships, just shorter ones. Uh, no, sweetheart. Getting plowed in the bathroom at the bar isn't a relationship. Sleeping with a guy for two weeks without ever finding out what his last name is isn't a relationship. Getting your back blown out by a Tinder date 48 minutes after you met isn't a relationship. Calling these relationships super short-lived doesn't fool anybody. And that six-week relationship she talked about was probably with a dude with a girlfriend that she knew about, but held out hope that he would leave his girlfriend for her, even though she knowingly played second fiddle to another woman. Again, Miss Testa, not a relationship. That was a man who simply used you to pass the time when his girlfriend was at work. Nothing more. Five years, she says, is a long time for me not to be in a long-term relationship, she continues. Some people are in LTRs back-to-back. -back. 
I mean, it's none of my business what other people are doing, but it's hard not to compare. I've just been alone for a lot of five years and I haven't found the right person to settle down with yet. Oh, now she wants to blame men. Now she wants to play the, my standards are so high, I just haven't found the right guy to settle down with card. This one's simple, guys. It's not that she hasn't found the right person. It's not that she's been telling these guys, sorry, you don't make the cut. No, baby girl, it's the other way around. You're not rejecting anybody. These guys are rejecting you. What this chick just said is the equivalent of, you can't fire me because I quit. Whatever helps you sleep at night, hun. About half the time, she says, it has been by choice. She continues, I say I've been single for a while, but at least half the time has been an intentional choice. I've consciously made the decision to be alone. I've had mixed feelings about this, both loving being single and hating it. Sometimes I adore the free time I have for myself, and other times all I want to do is fill up that time with another person. And this, gentlemen, is where the truth comes out when any woman says she's been single for an extended period of time. You see, she's chosen to be single, as in I want to have random hookups without being tied down because I want to hook up. But what she's not telling us is that the half of the five years where she chose to be single is the first half. You see, the first two and a half years, she had no interest in being in a relationship. She had dudes throwing sausage at her from every direction at all hours of the day at night. Being the impulsive creatures they are who lack temperance, discipline, and self-control, they indulge in the endless buffet of men. But somewhere along the way, say, probably around 28, 29 years old, she found herself wanting to be in a relationship. Not because she was tired of hooking up, but because she started to notice the attention she got from guys in her early 20s starting to dwindle. Oh, these guys still want to hook up with her, but she started to notice that they're not getting as attached like they used to. They weren't suggesting exclusivity in the form of a committed relationship like they were back when she was 21, 22 years old. So halfway through her little five-year binge, she decided to test the water a little bit, see if she still got it. And when she said, hey, you want to take this thing to the next level? And he said, uh, no thanks, I'll pass. But we can't eliminate the safe word. She said to herself, uh-oh, these guys don't want to commit anymore. I better find a boyfriend ASAP. And that was the start of the second half of this little five-year relationship drought where she was now angling for relationships and getting shot down. So here she is, now two and a half years after she discovered that her time ran out, writing an article about the five years of being single and then disingenuously telling us that half of it was by choice, which will lead us to believe that she went back and forth about wanting relationships as though she had opportunities for relationships throughout the entirety of these last five years when in actuality, it is the last half, and only the last half, where the decision to be alone and not in a relationship hasn't been made by her, rather made for her. Nice try, Janelle, but I'll give you credit here. You almost slipped that one past us. I've really needed to be alone at times, she says. There have been a few instances where the right thing to do was to be alone. For example, I was spending hours a day on dating apps and going out on multiple first dates a week. I was out of control, she says, when a friend had an intervention with me, I realized it was really time to take a deep breath and just be by myself for a while. Are you kidding me? An intervention? So let me get this straight. You are hooking up with so many guys in such a short amount of time, a friend of yours decided to stage an intervention? This means that this chick was straight up getting ran through and she was getting plowed by so many dudes that even her promiscuous friends were uncomfortable with how many dudes she was hooking up with. And let's not let this little phrase get away. She said multiple first dates a week. So she's going on all these first dates every week, which means there's not a second date the next week, just first dates every week, which means she's hooking up with every single dude she meets on the first date. This girl is out of control, guys. We all know that girls get passed around on the regular. That's common knowledge. But any time a female's friends have to stage an intervention because even they are uncomfortable with the number of men she's hooking up with, she is the worst of the worst. This chick probably has so much male DNA floating around in her that her genetic code's probably been completely rewritten. She's got brown eyes now, but she was probably born with blue eyes. Jesus Christ. I know there is hope for me, she says. Despite sometimes thinking I'm a piece of dirt, I know there's hope for me. I love the person I am and I know that someone else will love me too. This is just a phase I have to go through. It's important to maintain the hope that someday I'll find the right person and I won't be just using them to get outside of myself. Gentlemen, this girl knows there's no hope for her and she hates the person she is. Now, 
How do I know she hates the person she is? Because she engages in self-destructive behavior. Guys, you go to her website, you'll see what she looks like. She has all of the banana gobbler tells. Bull ring piercing, which is body mutilation. That's self-harm, which means lack of self-worth. Large visible tattoos she have. Same category. Females who have low self-worth seek self-worth by hooking up with a lot of guys to give themselves a sense of self-worth. Well, hopping from guy to guy never does the trick because despite what they say out loud, they know that any girl could engage in this kind of behavior without even trying, which means the validation they're seeking is status quo. A woman can get hookups for simply being in existence. She sometimes thinks she's a piece of dirt because she is. Her mind keeps telling her all of these things. The writing is on the wall but she simply cannot acknowledge it because if she does, things will spiral downhill in a hurry. And she knows it, which is why she lies to herself by saying she knows there's hope for her. No, sweetheart, this is not a phase. This is your station in life and it will not change. The reason you and women like you have to maintain hope that you'll find the right person is because if you don't, you'll be prescribed another antidepressant. Because if you actually admit to yourself that you'll never be in a relationship of consequence with a man you respect and love, you'll engage in even more self-destructive behavior. But sometimes I still feel hopeless, she says. I may sound like I'm all over the place here, but it's just not so simple. I have a lot of hope, but sometimes I also have hopelessness. It feels like I'm never going to find the right person or be in a happy relationship. I sometimes see this gap of time I've had as single as a failure, even though that's not true at all. She is all over the place and it is that simple. She only tells us she has a lot of hope because she knows she's hopeless. She keeps telling us, I have hope, I have hope, but who is she really trying to convince here? And every time it comes out of her mouth, her mind shocks her right back into reality by telling her, Janelle, stop lying to yourself, hon. You're not worthy of commitment. These are what she thinks when she is left to her own thoughts, which are honest and real. Then she says she sometimes sees this gap as a failure, but then she wants to believe it's not true. Dude. This chick is thinking out loud in this article. It's like her mind is at odds with itself and we're seeing the actual thought process play out. Sweetheart, you've been single for five years and it is a failure. You keep thinking these thoughts because it's the truth and you know it. Now go pop a pill so you can continue to be delusional about your hope. I'm putting work, she says, into personal growth. I'm spending this time wisely, really working on myself. I'm even in a relationship and sex 12-step program. I'm examining my patterns and trying to build a new thought process and actions around them. I'm bettering myself as a person through school, a sport, and being the best friend, daughter, sister I can be. This will all benefit me, she says, when I start seeing someone. Oh, now she wants to work on personal growth. Now she wants to not sleep with a guy a half an hour after she meets him. She's in a 12-step program designed to try to reprogram her mind not to be a hoe. Here's a thought. How about working on your personal growth when you're, I don't know, 16, 17 years old when you're at the dawn of your prime fertility? That way, you won't have to untrain yourself not to bounce from dude to dude. The fact that this woman thinks that she can just work on herself and undo all the damage that's been done to her by hooking up with all these dudes is laughable. The fact that she thinks it's actually going to increase her value, that's just sad. This woman actually believes that she can just take up a new sport, go back to school, and stop being selfish, and all of a sudden, men aren't going to see her for what she really is, which is just a receptacle with pink hair. Or was it purple hair? This will all benefit me when I start seeing someone, she says. So she's not doing this because it's the right thing to do. She's not deleting her Tinder because she understands that it destroys her body, mind, and self-worth. She's not getting in shape and trying to better herself because it will benefit her. Oh no. She's doing these things because she thinks it will get her a man, and she is dead wrong. Oh yeah, she'll get plenty of offers. But again, those offers will be from men she is not interested in. I'm saving myself, she says, for the right person. Oh man. In the past, she says, when I was in a lot of relationships, I was with the wrong people. I dated people who weren't good for me. Now I know my worth, she says, and the value of my time. I refuse to give it to someone who doesn't deserve it. Instead, I'm staying single because I just haven't met that special someone yet. Gentlemen, how many times do we have to hear the same song before we realize that all women are like that? What this girl is saying is what every girl says when she figures out that men who are worth a damn don't want her anymore. 
I see the error of my ways, and I now realize I shouldn't be sleeping around. I now realize that the bad boys, ex-cons, commitment phobes, and hookups were not good for me. I now realize that Tinder isn't what I should be doing. I now realize that I am worth so much more, and I will not give my body to just anybody. I will wait to be intimate with men from now on, because I know that I am worth so much more than just a one-night stand. Every single female, without exception, sings the same tired tune when they're in their mid to late 30s. Every one of them. It is getting boringly predictable. Yes, Janelle, you are 100% right. The bad boys were not good for you. That part you have correct. But where you are wrong is that you are no longer worth more than a one-night stand. Every man deserves you because every man has had you. You're not staying single because you haven't met that special someone. You're not staying single by choice. You are now the female equivalent of an involuntary celibate. Now, some of you might think, uh, Donovan, she can get sausage anytime she wants. She can't really be an incel, right? Good question. Allow me to explain. Men who are involuntary celibates are incels because they want to have romantic relationships with women, but can't. Women don't want to be intimate with them because they're not attractive to women. Now, Miss Testa isn't exactly in the same boat. She is in a sinking boat. At least incels can lift weights, learn game, and save money. Incels are pathetic, yes, but they can always turn it around. They are men after all. You want a relationship, but you can't have one because men of value don't want to commit to you. The difference is that you can't turn it around. No matter how much weight you lose or how long you go without firing up Tinder, the damage of all of these hookups has done to your body, mind, and soul is permanent. Broken men can be repaired, Miss Testa. Broken women cannot. And unfortunately for you and women like you, you won't figure this out until you've been prescribed your third anti-anxiety medication. Janelle Testa is yet another example of a woman who has to force herself to believe that all is not lost in terms of her finding a good man. Now we can all sit here and make fun of her delusional thinking, but the fact of the matter is that these women have to tell themselves this stuff so they can sleep at night. If women like her were to acknowledge the truth about their futures as perpetually single females who hate men, drink wine by the box, and own a half a dozen cats, they'd be miserable. OMG, Donovan, just because a woman can't find a good man doesn't mean she'll be miserable. Well, if that were the case, then why are 25% of women on antidepressants then? Women can say whatever they want to the world. They can act like they're okay with no longer having the ability to attract high value men. They can act like they're hashtag living my best life and all that other nonsense to try to make us think they're not crying inside. But we know the truth, and so do you. This is why women like her, Amy Horton, and Hannah Coleman write articles like this. Women always tell on themselves in the end, and Janelle Testa is no different. So fellas, do you think there is any hope for Janelle? And ladies, do you think I'm being too hard on her? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested to see. And for less than the price of a psychiatrist, you can watch my surgical breakdowns of articles like this, as well as popular dating shows like Love is Blind, 90 Day Fiancé, and The Bachelor. You can also get access to my archive, which contains past episodes as well as my Sunday webinars. Just go to patreon.com slash Donovan Sharp and you will join a tight-knit community of like-minded men striving for masculine excellence and living life on our own terms. The link is in the description.